Hey everyone. Hello. I'm Kelly. I'm Corey. And we're unleashed. <laughs> <laughs> it makes us giggle every time we say that. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh man, Corey said it's my turn today to start and I'm just like, I, I feel like I've been in this place where the, I've just been thinking so much, <laughs> too much sometimes I think. But I'll share an experience that I, I had yesterday. Um, like I said, I've just been in a place where I've been feeling a lot of emotions coming up and just sitting with a lot of heaviness and and just things like anger and some hurt and just stuff. It's just been coming up and I've, I've caught myself dwelling in it. We We had a lesson today in church and it was talking about, you know, walking through the the valley and you know not like pitching a tent and hanging out there you know it's, it's about like walking through it and and that's what I have been allowing myself to do is is to walk through it and not just like sit in it all the time but last night as I was I was <laughs> and being in the bath is like a great time to meditate for me because I'm just with my own mind and and I was thinking and and the words came into my mind that that all that Jesus wants from us is just our broken hearts and a contrite spirit and it just it really overcame me about just how broken my heart has felt lately and that's where all those, just a lot of the anger and the sadness and the sorrow is just because my heart has been so broken. And when I had that thought come into my mind that Jesus, all that he wants from us, you know, is just our broken hearts and our contrite spirits. He, he doesn't want all of this extra stuff that we feel like we have to do. You know, it's like there's so many practices and so many things that so many actions on our part that we feel like we need to do to to reach Jesus Christ or to have him in our lives or to to reach God and and it's really all that he wants is just our heart he just wants our broken hearts and whenever I like was I, and I just felt it I mean I just I know I just started sobbing I mean I just started crying and just feeling like I'm coming to him with with my broken heart like he knows everything that I've been feeling and experiencing over the last few weeks just so much like it's been righteous anger you know there is a difference between the anger that like tears us up inside and that just brings us down and makes us like you know hurt want to hurt ourselves and want to hurt others then there's that anger that righteous anger that just that moves us to want to make a change in the world that that makes us aware of the injustices and of the just things that are done in this world that are not right you know and and that is what I've been feeling is just and so it's brought up within me just such sorrow and such hurt and just that feeling of just having a broken heart and so I did like last night and so then the thought you know the contrite spirit I was like well what is contrite like how what even is contrite you know I had to go to my scriptures to understand that in my mind so that I could feel it and embody it and come to him with it and and it's just a, a sorrow like a a repentant spirit just uh, um, you know recognizing our own weaknesses it's just being humble and so I just I I feel like last night you know as I was just crying and just praying and just reaching for him it's so amazing the way that he reaches for us you know he draws us to him and I feel like through the past few weeks through that anger that I've been feeling through that righteous anger and through just that sorrow it's like he's been drawing me to him and then like last night just feeling so much in that brokenness in my broken heart he just placed in my mind his words just coming to me 
you know, come to me with your broken heart and your contrite spirit. And, and I just did. And, and it has brought such peace to me. Like, it really, it's so amazing how last night, you know, after, after feeling this way, I just was feeling that joy again in my mind and in my heart and in my soul. And just the peace that really can only come through him. And, um, it just has lifted, lifted me up. I mean, there is still, like, I still have stuff there because I recognize that he, it could be something that he needs me to be a voice for in this world, you know, just where that anger is coming from that I need to, to talk more about it. But that's just something, something that came out for me last night. Yeah. And it's amazing how that anger can be used for good and can be used to, to heal so many hurts that people are just misunderstood. Um, there's just so many, just people are so misunderstood in the world. And I mean, that's where most of our pain comes from. Most of our anger and just, we want to be loved. We want to love. We want to be back with love. Um, with Jesus, we want to be one with him. And whenever we see the hurt that people do to somebody that we love or care about or um, we are hurt in some way personally, uh, whenever whenever that stuff builds up within us, there's just a, yeah, we, our pride gets hard. We just become hardened instead of, instead of broken. And it took me a lot to become broke, you know, just realize I am freaking shattered here. <laughs> and, you know, why? Why am I so prideful? I don't know. Um, you know, it's... Uh, but through it all, it has just built my relationship with Jesus Christ and my, I've just sought for understanding him and specifically like who he is so much more in my life. Um, and to understand how to, to be one with him and to just, I don't have to, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to have those feelings of things that are unjust in the world and things that need to be changed. And there are so many people that are waking up and wanting to bring these things to light. And naturally, what I've been thinking about is how this world is naturally becoming elevated to an another state, another level of consciousness. Um, you know, there is, there's a ton of the wars and all the the things that are going on in the world as they continue to get stronger and stronger and worse and just all the evil stuff that goes on in the world the child slavery and you know it's just so abundant at the same time it is so abundant how many people are fighting against these things mm -hmm. are fighting against the wrongdoings and have anger, righteous anger about the things that are being done that just are not okay. And it is being exposed and eventually there's going to be enough people where we just won't accept it. We won't accept it to exist on this planet. And the planet and we as a people will naturally, it'll just naturally happen. This world will become a more heavenly place to live in. Um, we won't tolerate it anymore. We won't give in to the people in power, the media, the people that want to be in control. Everyone will turn their heart to Christ. Um, and I see it in so many different people in places that you would like, I can listen to some people 
that are just so into the science thing and then all of a sudden they'll start talking about Jesus and it's like well, this person actually kind of understands he, he's getting it he's embracing Jesus and uh, it's just healing it is no matter how a person gets to him if a person is seeking spirituality I think it all eventually leads to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. I just I've seen it so many times I mean there's so many examples of people that are just complete atheists and somehow just get turned all the way back around to Jesus Christ because I mean he's the source of truth he's the source of light he is the, that source and and I mean people can get blinded by the luciferian light that is so bright and it keeps them blinded but you know if they're truly searching for Jesus Christ I mean he he know he he wants his own and those people you know I just feel like true seekers of good will find him yeah um, you said something about like allowing um, people not allowing stuff to happen anymore and <clears throat> and I've recognized with myself that that has been something in my life that that has caused me to repress so much anger and why it has been coming up recently I I have just allowed behaviors and I've been very dismissive and I just, I, I see good, like I, I see good in people. And so whenever people have behaviors that are just really disagreeable and just like, just not good, I tend to really look past it because I can see from people's hearts. I understand why people behave the way that they do and why they say the things that they say. And I can be very understanding and I can be very forgiving of people's behaviors. And so during those times, you know, I can be very dismissive and I can just minimize things that truly need to be called out. And that's where I have had those fears of, of, um, like, the, the people pleasing like I don't want to upset someone I don't want to call anyone out and call anyone out on their bad behaviors and so I'll just minimize things and even though the behaviors may cause me anger and may upset me and and hurt me it's like I'd rather just keep the peace on the surface and shove all that down and so that's what's been coming up for me lately is the recognition of things that I have just repressed and that I've just dismissed. And I'm going to share. I'll just share. Like, my son came to me, um, called me a couple weeks ago with feelings that he was going through. Because he's in this healing process and everything. And he was just sharing with me so much hurt that he felt from people at church. And things that people had said to him and would pull him aside into rooms and say things to him. He's gay. And so there were just people who who said things to him that was just not necessary. And, you know, at the time I was just like, well, I mean, I just understand where they're coming from. You know, I get it. I get men's egos and <laughs> I understand, you know, people... People are in the letter of the law, more of the spirit of the law. And so I was very dismissive of the things that people had said to my son. And and at the time, I just was like, you know, I'd just ignore it, you know. But it's in our ignoring things that allows things to continue. And there is just no place in the church of Jesus Christ for us to be judgmental, for us to condemn other people, for us to think that we know the right way for another person's path and to tell other people, you know, it's like, 
we are to be Christ-like and to love. bring people into our arms and love them and ask, how can I support you? How can I love you? How can I be here for you? Not point our finger and preach scripture and condemn them and push them away. And preach some Old Testament. Right. Fire and brimstone. <laughs> right. And so, you know, at the time I... I did a lot at that moment. Like I completely minimized what the people had done and said to my son and I completely dismissed what my son was feeling and what he was going through. And I just minimized it all. And I pushed my own feelings down because I was like, Oh, there's nothing there, nothing there to see, you know? And so now like as he is going through his own healing and he brought up his feelings to me and his anger and just how much it's affected him, like hearing him, like crying to me, expressing this to me, it has brought up my mama bear anger. <laughs> like it has just brought up within me, like, oh my gosh, like there are people who have said things to my son that have pushed him away from God, away from Jesus. And that hurts me so much. It has broken my heart. It has just brought so much anger. Like, <laughs> Jesus that's what loves been... anybody yes. more than your son. I know. Like, I know. Like, God just... has some kind of meter, and he's going <laughs> to say, this boy over here is, I, I mean, come on, people. I know. How strong is my ego? I've thought about it all week long. My ego just wants to be right. My ego wants to tell people how they need to be. And it's like, the <laughs> ego needs to just go away because my ego is what gets me mm -hmm. into my own sinful places and to avoid thinking about myself my ego wants me to go tell other people how to live because I don't want to work on me becoming better and me working on me oh man it, geez, it's just about love. And it is. I mean, President Nelson, he's just, he nailed it. I mean, he is just on point. It is all about the love that Jesus Christ shared for everybody. He didn't come to condemn anybody. He came to save the lamb that's mm -hmm. out there on its own that feels completely isolated because... Yeah he feels like he's the sinner or she's the sinner and doesn't belong. No, that's who Jesus came for. People like me, mm -hmm. people like me that are not worthy. Mm -hmm. Well, who is exactly? I mean, the, whoever is uh, worthy cast the first stone, you know? And, and he, he wasn't in I was I was just listening to this on the way home from church. It's not that he was condoning certain things and saying embrace these certain things, but he's saying it doesn't matter. Love one another. Yeah. Because if I'm what makes my sin or my behavior, my ego, that's what I'd rather call it, just ego. Mm -hmm. What makes me more important than anybody out there? Jesus loves, God loves us all. Call him whatever you want, your higher power. We'll go back to that. I mean, I think it's pretty clear who we embrace. But the, <laughs> we're all going to be okay. That's, I've, I've said that a number of times lately. And it's just, I, I have had an experience, I've had a number of experiences that have just been so powerful where I've had my eyes opened up to the fact that we really are all going to be okay. And we're all going to be exactly where we want to be at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a C.S. Lewis book called The Great Divorce mm -hmm. that is so awesome like literally from the molecular level and from our cellular level, we are going to arrive at a heaven that we embrace, that we feel comfortable. Our body is one with the, 
the world that we live on. You know, we don't have that heavy feeling of gravity. We are um, in a in a state of complete peace, and that's for everybody. That's mm-hmm. not just for the people that are. I, I'm not even. Gonna, that's very judgmental. Everybody's got issues, Mm-mm. and everybody's got an ego. But it's time to just drop that nonsense. That is not what Christ wants. Um, the judgment is just. There's just so much judgment. And I need to be careful, very careful, because I see myself becoming judgmental of the judgmental behavior. Mm-hmm. So I need to check myself on that mm-hmm. because my ego is saying, "Oh, I'm being so less judgmental. Look at the right. people that are so judgmental around right. here. Right? That's oh, judging. Whoa! Right. Get back in your box. Just let go of your ego. Realize and that human love. nature is human nature, and love them all. Love everybody. Yeah. He didn't say love some people and hate others. Love your enemy. No. Yeah. Yeah. It is very sad that people are driven away from God because of other people that don't agree with their beliefs. Because at the end of the day, we all have to be okay with our own beliefs and still have a a peace with God. Mm -hmm. Having a son who's gay has just really opened my eyes up. And it's just... it brings such sadness to my heart because there's so much judgment and there's just so much like people like thinking saying he's going to hell and just just so much stuff so much judgment and it's like and people do not know my child like I know my child you know and it's like I can't even imagine and and I put myself like I am just a mortal human being and I've given the son to just to love and to to just experience this life with and God I mean God has just given me just a morsel of the love that he has for my son like I can't even imagine and it's like for people to think oh God doesn't love them because they're gay (laughs) what in the world like I just I love like Uh, And it just hurts my heart that so many people out there are just, they look at them different, they they just judge them differently, and it's like they're just children of God. They're just, there's my child. I mean, he's he's my child, you know, and, and it's a child of God, and it's just, I love him so much, and just want so much joy and happiness for him. And so that's just, that's been something that's been really heavy weighing on my heart over the past few weeks, ever since my son came to me, and and it's just brought up that, and and it's brought up other things from mm. from my life that I've just I've shoved down and I haven't looked at, and things that truly would cause a person to feel anger. You know, we did a video about anger a couple months ago, and um, and we talked about how neither of us have been like ones to feel our anger (laughs) we've always just like repressed it and like anger is bad you don't ever want to feel anger you know but it's like I'm coming to 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 really be in my anger and and I recognize that that there is a righteous good anger and my anger for my child is a good righteous anger that like it makes me just want to go out there and like preach to the world and you know like get on the rooftops and I guess this is I'm on the rooftops you know, <laughs> yeah, preaching to are. the world and like yeah. like truly God he just wants us to love one another I mean why do we make everything so complicated like why does anybody want to anybody that's a Christian anybody that's believes in God anybody that believes in love why why would we ever want to put anybody in a box and say god loves me but he doesn't love you because you're behaving it that is not what god's about <laughs> i'm just sorry and i'm not i'm not trying to be on a soapbox 
I mean, I've... <laughs> if human behavior is going to damn us to hell, then I'm gone. We're all. Yeah, I mean, I mean. I'm done. And I just cannot live that way. Mm-hmm. And, and I choose to love. I choose to love everybody. I choose to love everybody. And it's just... It's changed my life. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I've really always had this love is the answer type of mentality. I, I always have. It's something that I've just... But I have never been able to love myself. Mm-hmm. I've always had such a hard time loving myself. When it comes to other people, I just haven't had a hard time... I don't I don't know why but I've been so hard on myself and just so unforgiving but God doesn't want that either. Mm-mm. Love love yourself. We have to love ourselves yeah. first. We really we truly have to love ourselves first before we can truly love other people purely the way that God wants us to love them. Otherwise I'm going to be going around judging people left right. and right. Right. Yeah. And we, you know, as Christians especially as Christians who believe in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is like, he came to, to teach us, to show us how to be, how to behave, how to love others. You know, there's just no room for judgment as followers of Jesus Christ. I'm like, I feel like if anything, we should have congregations full of our gay brothers and sisters who are there worshiping with us and feeling his love for them. And instead they feel, they feel judged. They feel marginalized. They feel like cast out, you know, and, and it just, it makes me so sad as the mother of one of those children who, who that has affected in the Christian world. It's just, there's really no room for it. And it makes me very sad, but as I started this video, you know, just having that broken heart and that contrite spirit, you know, just he, Jesus Christ is our way of healing and healing that broken heart because he knows, he knows my heart. He knows my son's heart. He knows each and every single one of us. And it really is as we as we come to him with our broken hearts it's like he is able to to mend it he's able to bring peace to it and comfort and and that love and and as i just as i just continue to love myself and continue to listen like it's truly listening to others like listening to my son and hearing him and not trying to tell him, oh, you don't feel that, you know, just listening, listening to other people and where they are and allowing them to be exactly where they are and just loving, just loving them. Like that is what God wants us to do because we can become vessels for his love. You know, anytime that we are loving another person, it is God that's loving them because love comes from God. And that's all, that's what he wants for us. And, and as we, as we come to him with, with our brokenness and our, our just broken hearts and with that humility, just knowing that we can't do it all on our own. We can't change the world all on our own. I can't force and make other people treat my son differently or treat, you know, treat the gay community differently. But I personally can do my part. I personally can, can allow that righteous anger that has come up within me as a mother of a gay son to, to share, to share with the world that we need to change. We need to do things differently. We need to love our people better. We need to love them more and embrace one another and just love. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. I can't add to that. It really is. And it's the only way this world is going to continue to elevate is more people loving everybody regardless. And healing. The people that have been damaged and just traumatized because they are a certain way and they feel so judged. The healing of them 
and the healing of the people that have been the judges. I mean, all of us just need to come together. <laughs> That's just one person at a time. It's yeah. it's you. It's it's just yeah. me. All you do is me. It's me just changing my life and being able to be a light to influence others. And it's like if there's somebody, if there's just one person out there that we're able to touch and to influence, then that's just going to spread and it's, you know, it's just each one of us. Yeah. Yeah. We can't really choose what's put in our life, but we can choose to embrace it and accept it and realize that this is all God's plan and mm -hmm. we have no control over it and we don't need to judge anybody or anything as good or bad. We just need to be our best selves and elevate the world, mm -hmm. bring the world up and we're naturally just organically going to move to a world that is enlightened and living from the heart instead of living from the gut <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just, just it's it's beautiful and I see it happening right in front of us mm -hmm, and do. people aren't going to be marginalized or separated or segregated or whatever everybody's going to come together and a lot of things are going to be exposed and revealed and a lot of more truth is going to be revealed mm -hmm. and people are going to come to an understanding that we really don't know anything you know, I love it. Absolutely. The more I grow and the more I learn, the more I know that my young age that I really don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And I hear that the older you get, the more you realize you don't know. So <laughs> right. I look forward to really not knowing how much I don't know or no, really knowing how much I don't know <laughs> because I just, but I, I'm, I'm just grateful for love for the peace that I have within me today. Mm -hmm, me too. It hasn't come easy, you know, but uh, yeah. I want to I wanna hold on to it. I love y'all. Yeah. You know, even, and I, I know we're like wrapping up here, mm -hmm. but yeah. even, even in my last few weeks as I've been feeling all of this stuff coming up, you know, I still continue to have so much gratitude. I wake up with so much gratitude and thanksgiving and and I'm constantly telling God, you know, all the things that I'm grateful for because I, because I know that the adversary, I know that with anger, that it is a heavy, it's a heavy energy and sadness and pain. I mean, those are all really heavy things to feel within our bodies and it can really bring us down. And I know in the past, like I, I would have thought oh I'm so depressed I need to go get a pill so I'm not depressed but it's like today I'm just able to recognize that that it's just these things that really I need to feel I need to feel these things so that I can heal and so that I can be better and feel better and so I'm so grateful to to have the practices that we have had in our lives with with exercising and with um, with meditating and just having gratitude, it's like those are the practices that yoke us to Jesus Christ. You know, it's not like I have to do these things so that Jesus is in my life because Jesus is always in my life, especially as as we come to him with our broken hearts and our contrite spirits. Like that is all he asks of us. And at the same time, he has given us ways to yoke ourselves to him. As we read his word, as we pray, as we um, are in the gratitude, as, as we do all these things, it's just, it keeps him in our lives in a place where when we are feeling all of this heaviness, when we're feeling this anger, when we're feeling all this stuff that's in us, that's trying to move us forward, that it doesn't bring us down to where Satan, to where the adversary can take off with us and bring us into the judgment and, you know, all this other stuff. Because, like, I have not had anger or anything towards any specific people. Like, I don't have anything towards people because I understand and I love people. But it's just the collective mindset that our world is in right now that brings me pain, that brings me hurt, and just the recognition of where we have been as a people. And, and I think that as 
more of us are are healing and we're just allowing God to to come into our hearts into our our minds and our souls and we're truly striving to follow him that that he is like Corey said he is just collectively lifting us up to to just have it be in a different world I mean we are creating a new world and it's going to move us into what I believe the millennium yeah. when Jesus Christ comes it's like I mean Jesus can't you know I mean he's he's coming he's coming but he he needs us to rise up to him you know, he, that's what he wants. He's, he's, pull, he's pulling us and drawing us closer to him. And it's releasing all of these things that have been just like these heavy weights and magnets that have been stuck on us, keeping us tied to this world, into Separated. our ego, into our natural man, and just all of that stuff that we talk about. Yeah. It's just a beautiful thing it is. to recognize what's happening in the world today and that it's we're part an of it. organic process that's just going to follow laws yeah, and follow nature happening. and we're going to just be part of it or not <laughs> right You're either going to rise up and be part of that one collective or you'll be in the ground in the yeah, dirt yeah <laughs> you'll, you'll really. be able to vibrate at the frequency of this planet as it elevates yeah it's so interesting it is I look forward so to all true. my gay brothers and sisters to be there with me and whoever else that gets judged so much in this world. Yeah. I love the fact that we're all going to be living here and enjoying life together. Mm -hmm. I hope it happens in my life. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Me too. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people getting enlightened. And from what I see, it's getting faster and faster and mm -hmm. happening more and more. So. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All right. Yes, it was. All right. I love y'all. Well, thank y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.